Is 35mm film any good for landscapes? Look, everybody understands that for landscape photography you need a big sensor, whether that be digital or film. I mean, I'm as guilty as anyone of using the larger formats wherever possible. I like large format 4x5. I also do a bit of 10x8 and I also shoot predominantly medium format with my Bronica. But not everybody's got large cameras and if you're starting out with film photography you might start with something a bit more humble like this Nikon F80 or an N80 as it's known in the States. I've just got a 28 to 200 Tamron Super Zoom. Total cost about £100 so very cheap and easy, very accessible. But the second reason you might want to shoot 35mm film and the reason I'm shooting it on my outing tomorrow is that it suits the conditions and it suits the type of shot I'm taking. Now I'm going to a location I've been to many times before so I know exactly where I'm gonna put my tripod, I know exactly what focal length I need but the issue is I've always shot it in digital before, only once in film because I'm shooting pre-dawn. Um, the show's over once the sun comes up because it tends to be far too bright, I'm shooting at the sun and the light changes rapidly. Now with that rapidly changing light I never know when the best conditions are until I get the images back later. So typically I'll be shooting every five minutes or so a sequence of shots and at the end I might decide on the, the very early pre-dawn blue light or I might go for the one where the sun's just risen. So that's quite a lot of film if you're shooting with large format or medium format. And the second reason is the aspect ratio. Now the type of shot I'm after best suits a panoramic or a 3 to 2 crop. So if I shoot with my Bronica I'm going to be chopping off half the frame so I'm not getting much benefit over 35mm. And also as an element of curiosity I want to know how big I can make a print from 35mm film. I've done them before but uh, this time I'm going to go through the process and sort of see and explain to you exactly how, uh, how I go about that and how big those prints can be made. So. Without further ado, let's uh, pack up here and get off and do the shoot for tomorrow morning. Okay, I've arrived. It's a beautiful morning. Uh, there's not much cloud. There may be a bit of mist to catch the sun coming up, but it is beautiful and still and calm. And at least this time I'm not stuck in fog and uh, all sorts of awkward conditions. So about a 10 minute walk up to the top, get myself set up and get shooting. Right, I'm set up. It's still pre-dawn, about 40 minutes to go before sunrise. But this is a location that works best before the sun comes up over the mountains behind me. Now, I have got the Nikon F80 set up with Fuji Provia, 100 speed film, slide film, which will cope with this contrast level quite well because I've got a two-stop hard grad on there as well to take the sky values down. Initially eight seconds at F8, as the light improves, it will soon speed up and I'll be into fractions of a second, but Fingers crossed, this is going to be exactly what I'm after this morning. Now the light levels are increasing very, very quickly. I'm already around about one to two seconds at F8. Uh, the estuary is well lit up now. Not got the colour I was hoping for yet, but uh, it does look very good when you actually view it through the viewfinder and it cuts out all the distractions. So. I'm still pretty hopeful I'm going to get that, uh, that lovely sunrise which is due now in about 20 or so minutes. Well just out of interest I'm metering with my usual, I'll get it out for you, um, excuse me, my uh, Seconic 508 spot meter this morning and I'm taking a reading from a sandbank, I don't know if you can see it behind me, I'll flash a picture up and show you exactly where I'm taking my spot meter reading from. And I'm setting the camera manually, so I'm adjusting the shutter speed and aperture myself. Now interestingly, I flipped the camera, just for interest, onto aperture priority. And it gave the same reading. So uh, yeah, kudos to Nikon for getting the uh, metering spot on. Or uh, maybe we're both wrong, I don't know. But it certainly gives me confidence in my own spot meter reading technique. Now in addition to shooting with Provia this morning, I've also packed another little Nikon F80 and I've put that, uh, sorry, I've put in that some Ektar colour negative film, same speed, 100 ASA um, far better suited for when the sun comes up and the dynamic range goes off the scale if that sun does come up over the mountain behind me at that point the Provia will struggle even with uh, many graduated filters so I've got myself covered and also I have the option then of picking the 
one with the uh, the most pleasing look uh, pays to have options. Right, so that just about wraps it up for the shooting part of this video. As I said yesterday, the purpose of this trip, um, obviously to get a nice shot, but really is to demonstrate to myself uh, and maybe other people what 35mm film is capable of in this day and age, in a digital age, with a hybrid workflow. So I hope to have captured uh, a strong enough image that makes it worthwhile doing a, a large print. By large, I mean A2 and above. Now, to get that sort of quality with 35 millimeters is very difficult, but it is possible with care. And hopefully I've got an image which is good enough to start with. So let's get back to the office. Let's get the films developed and let's see what we can do with them. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom now. I've scanned in the images on my Epson V700, only scanning them at 2400 dpi because that is the true resolution of the scanner, no point going any higher. I've coloured the Provia slide shots in blue and I've left the Ektar ones in red just so you can get a rough idea of the the difference in the in the sort of colour palette of the two different films. Um, and it has become immediately obvious to me that I'm favouring the Provia slide film. I mean, the XR has captured a very wide range of tones, but it's just a little bit lacklustre. It's not very punchy. It's not really the tonality I'm after. So I'm immediately switching my attention to the slide shots. Now, they really fall into two broad categories. There's the pre-dawn shots, which are very subtle with the gentle lighting and uh, subdued hues. And then as soon as the sun came up, it changed completely. It's much more vibrant, much more uh, punchy and in your face. Uh, so really it's a question of um, which which one do I want to select because I'm going to make a big print out of this. I've got to get the right the right image. Now, this does appeal to me in some ways because of the sun being in the frame. It's quite strong. Uh, it's quite eye-catching, although the sun is a little bit sort of off to one side and it's dragging my eye out the frame. Um, whereas I'm really liking some of these earlier ones and particularly these up here, which are catching my eye with the sort of bend of the the estuary this one here particularly I love this sweep here in the shot um, so choice is going to be between this one and I think the first of the sunrise shots so side by side comparison um, well the one on the right is a bit more obvious it's a bit more cliched I think it's more of a postcard to be honest um, you know it, it's Marilyn Monroe uh, the one on the left is a bit more subtle, it's a bit more Audrey Hepburn. Uh, and in my mind, there's never any contest, it's going to be Audrey. So I'm going to be selecting this image here to be the one I work on. Now, I'm not going to actually use this slide, this scan, sorry, because it was done on the Epson V700. And whilst that's a very, very capable scanner for medium and large format, it's a little bit out of its depth for making large prints from 35mm slides or negatives. So I'm going to rescan this particular slide with my Minolta 5400. Now that's a, a much higher quality scanner. It's got very effective infrared cleaning, which doesn't uh, reduce the sharpness. It's also got a grain dissolver and it's got much better dynamic range. So I can dig into those shadows and uh, hold the highlights at the same time. So I'm going to make a quick scan of that and then we'll uh, come back to this tutorial. Okay, so this is my scan from the Minolta, the Minolta 5400. It's a lot higher resolution. I've got a lot more pixels to play with on this one. I've got about 8,000 pixels now on the horizontal as opposed to about uh, 3,500 or so from the Epson. Now, we have a quick look into the back of the image. It might not look very sharp, but this is with no sharpening applied. And also, that is quite a large, quite a large blow up from a small section. And I can see clean detail and separation okay there's a tree line there bit of mist in the morning um, yes yeah, so there's, there's plenty in there to go on I've got uh, information going on in the shadows which I can recover slightly although I don't want to pull too much of it out because it'll lose the impact 
that's sort of the uh, the look I'm going for. I really want to accentuate the the flow of the water through the estuary and the subtleness of the background. So I'm going to crack on uh, a bit of a speeded up section, I'm afraid here, and I'm going to edit the image and come up with something which I can send to my printer. So uh, please be patient, and uh, we'll get on with it. something that's quite interesting to do at this point is to see just how well the film image would compare to a digital equivalent. Now fortuitously I took my Nikon D610 with me on the trip and although I've not used it for the the main images I did use it for some test shots and I had exactly the same lens, the same graduated filter and uh, I did shoot with it slightly earlier, so the, the digital image does have uh, some differences in terms of lights being switched on in a, a nearby village. You can see at the end of the shot, but it's just interesting to compare how the two stand up. Now, obviously the 24 megapixel uh, full frame digital image is going to be a lot cleaner and have a lot more uh, fine detail in it. And I've had to put a lot of sharpening onto the film shot. So we've got the digital image on the left here, 24 megapixel and I've got the resized film image which is almost the same composition on the right and as you can see it's quite a bit more uh, noise and grain in the film image I've had to apply quite aggressive sharpening to get it up to the levels I would expect from a decent print and uh, in the sky obviously the digital image is super smooth at our ISO 100 no noise at all um, otherwise the film image itself does actually have a lot of detail in it. It has captured a lot of the the same information levels and also in the shadows surprisingly the film image has stood up quite well. If you look at the, the I'll say the fine details in the trees there's not a huge amount of detail in either image but you can actually make out texture within the distant trees there on both images so yeah it's just interesting for comparison's sake and obviously the digital image would make a superior print you could take it a lot larger you could add a lot more sharpening a lot more clarity and structure into it but uh, yeah overall they can be made to look quite similar right then with the basic editing done it's time to take it back into Photoshop and resize it for printing okay so I just changed my page setup, get it onto A2 and just do my other bits and pieces for print settings. Make sure it's going out on a matte paper, I don't want the Epson switching over to the uh, glossy paper which wastes a lot of ink. Uh, set it to 16 bit output, I don't want it on high speed, um, everything else looks okay there. Just need to resize it now okay it's all looking pretty good so I'll send that off to the printer all right so that's the A2 print made let's have a look at how it turned out Right, this is the, the final print made on my Epson 3880 and I am pretty pleased with it. It's got plenty of details still in there and the grain structure is remarkably tidy. It's, uh, it's not too grainy at all. Not quite as sharp as I'd have liked. Um, my friend Robin has done a lot of work on sharpening uh, in the past and he has some videos out which I'll put a link to in the uh, description or on the screen somewhere. And I think I'll be following that next time. I think I need to be a bit more aggressive with the sharpening at A2. I've made A2 prints before and they've really come out very, very well. So overall, very pleased with the colours, very pleased with the grain structure. But I wanted to go a little bit larger. I think A2 is fine. But what if you want to go to a real poster size print? So I had something a bit, oh, excuse me, a bit bigger made at just a basic lab. Let me have to stand up to show you this one. Now this is a 40 by 30 inch print. So 
a huge enlargement from 35mm film, I think you'll agree. And I actually think it looks better than the A2. Now, the reason for that is it's just got more impact. It's, it's huge. I mean, when you think that the 35mm negative would probably sit just down here in the corner, what I like about it is it's kept a lot of the colour from the original. It's not washed out and the, the skies are particularly smooth and, and relatively grain free. Quite a bit of grain in the mid-tones uh, and the shadows, but there's still detail in there as well. And the nice thing is that the colour rendition is very, very similar to the original slide. So yeah, a good job by the lab considering it's just a £15 automated print. And I think it goes to show that you can make very large prints from 35mm negatives. I mean, sure, they're not going to be as good as a, a digital file. They're not going to be as good as a medium or large format negative or slide, but they're good. If you view this from three feet away, it looks excellent. It's only when you start poking your nose into it that it, uh, it loses the, the impact and you start to see the flaws. But I think part of that as well is the fact that I shot this with a consumer grade zoom lens a 28 to 200 Tamron. And I would like to repeat this exercise, possibly with black and white film, uh, so I do away with some of the, the, the problems of getting the colours exactly right. I mean, even though they're pretty good, you know, black and white film is going to simplify that, especially for a lab where I'm not paying much. And I'd also like to use sharp prime lenses. Um, I have some prime lenses for my Nikon, which are much sharper and will give better results. So uh, yeah, that's for another trip. But uh, Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this uh, little video and outing and uh, maybe you've picked up some tips and maybe it'll encourage you to go out with 35mm and shoot some landscape. So until the next time, thanks for watching.